Hello, everyone. Welcome and good evening or good morning from wherever you are watching. My name is Tamar. I am the co-founder of Women Who Lift Israel, and I am super, super excited for our special guest tonight. We have Ma'ol Tiuli all the way from Boulder, Colorado, joining us this evening. Ma'ol, first of all, thank you for being with us. Thank you for your time. And how are you doing? Hi, everyone. Um, I'm very excited to be on the show. Um, I'm happy Tamar and uh, Sarah reached out and uh, um, I was very uh, flattered that they invited me to be on the show. Uh, I'm doing good. Just, um, you know, getting back to the swing of things here in uh, Colorado after being a month away, you know, in England and in Israel. So um, here we are. <laughs> Here we are. So here we are tonight on Women Who Lift live interview series. Sarah and I, my co-founder, we started this interview series specifically because we wanted to give our members as much inspiration, motivation, female role models and athletes to look up to, especially during all of this difficult time around us. And Ma'ol, you are like the epitome of a strong female role model, so I'm so excited to have you tonight on our live interview. And I would love to go right in, jump right into the questions, spend as much time getting to know you as possible. Um, so please feel free to tell us about yourself, who you are, where you're originally from, and anything you would like us to know about you. Thanks, yeah, so I, um, I was born and raised in Israel, in Kfar Saba, and uh, I, um, I'm a long distance runner, as you know, <laughs> I run 5K to marathons, but most recently, you know, I uh, focus on like half marathon and marathons, more like the longer distances. Um, I did, the, I was a soldier teacher in the army actually um, uh, between 2008 and 2010 before I went to college in San Francisco and uh, after that moving to Boulder, Colorado. Uh, yeah, I mean, except for running, which is obvious that I like to do. <laughs> uh, although I have a, I think I have like, you know, every, I think professional athlete has a kind of like a difficult relationship with their sports. But I mean, you know, in the, you know, big picture, every, of course, we, we love our sports. And the uh, running is, you know, besides it be, being my profession is also a form of uh, therapy for me. and. Uh, I also really like the outdoors, so it's a really um, good activity for me to enjoy, like being outside um, in nature, um, and especially especially in Boulder, which is like really beautiful place. You can run like in a lot of places that that are very beautiful. So really enjoying running here, um, and especially now we are going into the summer, which I was like really looking forward to the whole winter. <laughs> to run in my favorite places uh, up high in the mountains. Um, yeah, uh, besides, I mean, besides running, um, I also like uh, traveling, of course, when it's uh, possible. And uh, I like uh, I like coffee. So I, this is like my, my vice. <laughs> I really like coffee and I like to, um, try new restaurants with like with my friends when that's also possible. Unfortunately, I was not able to do it too much, you know, in the past, uh, whatever, a year and a half or so. Um, yeah, and I like me meeting new people as well. So that's always fun for me. Amazing, and I love your energy. It's just everything you describe, you have such passion and you just have this giant smile throughout everything oh, that you say. Thanks. <laughs> and you just have this really contagious energy and I love that about you. So I would love to start from the very beginning because you told us all this awesome stuff about you now. What about young Ma'ol? What was young Ma'ol like? Uh, I was a nerd. <laughs> 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 so I think like I was very different than, than what I am today and I can't really explain it. Um, I think um when i was when i was young um uh, i think all i cared about was uh sports and school for whatever reason and i think i was uh i i don't know if i would call it like an introvert but i was uh you know very much focused on those things and 
and that's about it and um i you know i didn't really go to like parties or stuff like that so very kind of doing my own thing and i think things kind of changed when i started the army i have no idea why or how it just kind of flipped and uh, i feel like i became a little more like extrovert and just um just a little more free maybe like you would i i would call it uh yeah it just really changed but yeah i was a big big nerd <laughs> and uh yeah and i did i did the sports like my whole life since like i really remember myself with whether it was like gymnastics or um, tennis or krav maga or mm -hmm. uh yeah that's pretty much um that's what I was when I was young. <laughs> Amazing. So we have a question, which I'll go ahead and feature now because it kind of segues into our next question. Um, did you run when you were young? Were you a runner as a young kid? Yeah, so um, I wouldn't say I was a runner when I was young. So um, basically how I started running was um, I think in elementary school, I think it was the fourth grade or something like that. My PE teacher wanted me to race this um, race that was uh, kind of like inter, it was like a municipal race that the schools went to. Okay. And he was like, you know, come be on the team. And I was like, okay, fine, you know, whatever. Uh, I'll run. And I was eight. I took eighth place, which was pretty good you know i was like okay cool i got eighth place and the next two years i actually won the race and he was like more i think you have like a lot of potential blah 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 you should um you should go to this uh hug, you know like this after after school program that the city um, is putting on and it was uh you know track and field like athletics um, and I was like, okay, you know, I'm sure I'll go. Why not? It sounds fun to me. So I did. And we were not really doing, well, we were doing athletics, but it was more like all encompassing, like running and jumping and throwing and playing. So it was very kind of general. Um, and, mm -hmm. and, you know, when I was doing that, I was also doing other things like Krav Maga and tennis. But at some point, my, my, parents were saying that it's just too much for me <laughs> and and for them and they wanted me to focus on like something specific so I was like okay I'll give up on tennis and I think I like the this athletic after school program so I'll keep doing that and um, yeah I think when I was you know maybe 12 um, I started like taking participating in um, races that were more uh, you know like more regional and then it was uh, you know the whole country and uh, i just started winning races and running like you know israeli records uh, for like my age you know like my ages like every age there's like few different categories um yeah and and, and it just kind of basically you know it got the ball rolling and and i was like oh i'm good at this school you know i'll keep doing that <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah that's just kind of how I started running it kind of I felt like chose me in a way you know that's amazing it did yeah. choose you I like that it did choose you yeah um yeah and and um I think like one of your questions was uh, uh if I uh if if making it to the Olympics was always my dream um, I don't think like when I was, you know, like when I was young, it was like my dream. But I think when I, you know, when I saw I'm, I'm pretty good at running, I think it kind of like a dream that was developed, you know. And uh, mm -hmm. so I think, yeah, maybe when I was around like 15, I started like, you know, thinking about that. But, you know, like, with that being said, I always, I remember, you know, watching the Olympics, especially like Sydney 2000, I remember watching it and I always thought it was so cool, you know? Um, yeah, so I think like maybe, maybe like in the back of my mind, it was always there, but I think actually thinking about, oh, I can make it to the Olympics was more when I really uh, was getting a little more competitive in running. 
Yeah, that totally makes sense. And actually, speaking of the Olympics, that's our very next topic. Not only did you go to the Olympics in 2016 in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil, but you also recently qualified in uh, a race in the UK to represent Israel at the 2020 Olympic Games in Tokyo. Uh, what crossed your mind when you found out that you qualified? Um, so I think like to this question there, it's kind of like, a, it's a journey, you know? Um, I don't know if maybe some people know, but uh, in order for me to qualify for Tokyo, I had to run a 13 minute plus 20 seconds, I guess, PR, which is a, a huge jump from my previous PR. Um, and, it, you know, it was a long time coming. And, you know, uh, while I believe that I can, I can do it, I really had to do it, <laughs> you know. And it's not like, oh, I ran, you know, 233 and I just need to improve four minutes, I actually need to run almost 15 minutes faster, you know, like 13, which is a, a huge jump. So, you know, like there was a lot that went to it, of course, um, but to your specific question, um, during the race, I knew I was like in the territory of the, of the standard, like I knew I was running like the pace approximately, I was not, Sure, but I knew that I'm in the area. So uh, mm -hmm. I, I think the last mile, I basically just sprinted to the end <laughs> because I was like, I gotta, you know, it's now or never. And and when I and so I didn't know when I crossed the finish line. That's why when I looked at I looked at my watch right when I crossed the finish line and I saw I saw 29 or something. I I, um, I think I think my watch showed like 07. Uh, the time was like actually 04. And uh, yeah, I was like really happy, of course. Um, it's, I almost like didn't believe it. Um, it was like a, lot of, like a lot of emotions at once, I think. Um, it's like almost like surreal feeling, um, but I was very excited and there was like, yeah, I felt like fulfillment and emotional because I went through a lot to get to that point. Um, you know, but more, like, I think probably it was, I, I would say one of like the biggest moment, like the happiest moments in my life, definitely. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. And I can say, first of all, that we are all very, very proud of you. Um, and we're very excited to root for you in the, the, I keep wanting to say 2021, but it's the 2020 Tokyo Olympics uh, coming up yeah. uh, in a few months. We're very excited to root Thank for you. you. Um, and we have lots of runners in our group, actually. And a question that has come up, a lot of women posting in our group, uh, women who run regularly, they say they all uh, hit something called hitting the wall. Um, hitting the wall is a phrase that some people might know. It's when your your mind and your body just want to quit. Uh, and during a hard run, that is a really, really difficult point to get to. Uh, what do you tell yourself to keep going when you hit the wall? Um, how do you train and maintain your mental strength for those really difficult running moments? Yeah, so I think like there are like two components to that. Uh, the first component is of, of course the physical component. So um, you can't, I think in a marathon, you can't always anticipate how you're gonna feel or what's gonna happen, but definitely training in the right way can help not hitting the wall. But uh, if we are speaking about more like the mental aspect, uh, for me, um, it, it really depends. Every race is different. I don't have any specific like mantra or something specific that I, I know helps me. It just depends on the circumstances and, and the time and the race itself and, and like what, it, what the race means, you know, and all that. Um, specifically, specifically like in this race, uh, because there was a lot of, a lot of pressure, of course, uh, I, I did a lot of work with my 
with my uh, therapist, uh, you know, kind of like leading into the race. Uh, I've been seeing my therapist for, I guess, five years now. So it's an ongoing, it's an ongoing uh, journey that, you know, it's not like one specific thing, but it's just kind of like a continuous, continuous journey that, you know, led us here. But, you know, of course, before races, we talk more specifically about things, but um yeah so for 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 example for this particular race um i had a few things that you know came to my mind that helped me kind of get through the difficult moments in the race uh one of them was like that i know that just being on the start line after all the setbacks that i had in the last four or five years was already a win. So I was like, I'm already a winner. It doesn't matter how I finish this race. And, you know, that's something that I told myself. And the other thing was was that I have to, like, because I, I had this tendency to, like, look backwards, like, what's happening behind me. And I was like, this is not helping me. Like, I need to look forward, you know. And, and actually, once I told myself that in the race, I actually felt this, like, almost physical thing it's almost like a burden off my shoulders i felt like kind of like i left it behind me and i felt a little easier like physically so um that was like a pretty cool experience in this particular race um when i decided that i need to look forward and not backwards um yeah and i think the other thing is that my friend was also kind of helping me kind of I don't know, you know, you sometimes you just have conversations with people like before and something that you don't even know what they're going to say will stick with you like in a race. So I remember my friend called me before and he was like, more like, just go and freaking celebrate, you know, celebrate every mile. Like, I don't care like how many miles you're going to run, but just, you know, be happy and celebrate, you know, celebrate this. So, so for some reason that got, you know, that was stuck with me like during the race. And uh, and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna celebrate that I'm here and I'm able to do this. And um, cause there were times that I was not able to do this for, for different reasons. So really like just getting on the start line for me was uh, already a win, you know? So yeah, it, it really depends yeah, on absolutely. the circumstances. I think. I like that a lot. I mean, <clears throat> listen, we're all very, very happy and proud that you qualified to go to the Olympics. However, at the end of the day, we really do this for ourselves. And the fact that you even were out there um, after everything that you've been through and after everything that you've gone through is amazing in and of itself. There are not many people who get to an Olympic qualifying run to begin with. So that is pretty cool. And the fact that you did qualify and the fact that you are going is just like the cherry on top of how amazing you already are. <laughs> yeah, so. it, it's definitely, there's a lot that goes into it. Um, and, you know, I, I feel like it. part of it is the stars have to align as well, you know? Um, and, you know, we all know it was a very difficult like year and a half and, you know, for, I mean, I, I don't want to, I don't know. I think for athletes, it was maybe like runners, it was a little more like just because there were like no races, um, you know, so it was just kind of have to work through through that. And yeah, I think like, you know, part of it was I got a little lucky with the race and, you know, that it actually went forward because two, two weeks prior to that, we were not sure it was going to go forward, actually. <laughs> so um, really? Yeah, yeah, it almost didn't happen. They ha had to move it from one place to another, and it was all craziness. Um, and that was our actually our last chance to basically last and only chance to to try and qualify for Tokyo because because everything that you know happened with COVID and everything like that. So yeah, but you know, it almost it almost doesn't matter at this point, you know. For me, at least, I mean, you know, it's it's almost yeah, it's all totally the all the all the hardships are like behind at this point. Yes, 
Yeah, that's true. I mean, you were able to leave them behind and now you can really focus on going forward and being the best that you can be in Tokyo. So, yeah, and we yeah. are all hopefully for you. <laughs> that's the goal. Yes, yes. Hopefully that is the goal. Yes. So then our next question is really about your support system, because <clears throat> as amazing as every athlete is, every athlete has a team around them that makes them incredible. So who are your support system? Who are they and how do they help you be the best Ma'ol that you can possibly be? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a really good question because um, sometimes people don't really um, maybe they give the credit that's due and, and, and definitely, as you said, like I wouldn't be able to be where I, where I am without like you know my support system who i trust and it also takes some time to figure the right for you you know and uh when especially when especially when things don't go well you know you have to have these people around you so for me definitely my family my mom and my dad are always there for me even though they're not so happy i live in the states right now <laughs> but uh they 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 support me no matter what, you know, and uh, they, um, they're they happy that I'm happy. Uh, but I talk to them every day and uh, yeah, just about things. Um, yeah, so they help me and also they've been helping me financially because uh, running is not cheap. <laughs> um, and, in, you know, I, I don't really want to get into that, but yeah, so they've been a big support uh of course my friends are like a big support as well you know you you know i can be myself like when i'm around like you know my my family and my friends and you know that's important um and the mm -hmm. other big piece is my coach my current coach um in, you know he's not only my coach i think he's like a really good friend of mine uh, and i can tell him everything that's on my mind and i trust him that you know uh you know, he listens to me and he understands. And I also try like in a, you know, a professional manner, of course. Um, yeah, so he always kind of like lifts me up and um, yeah, just helps me stay balanced and uh, calm when I need and positive when I need. And, uh, he, you know, besides that, I think he's also a really good person and it's always like really nice to be around a good person and i think that's probably what's most important is you know besides you know it's okay if you're a good athlete and whatever but if you know you have to be a good person as well and yeah so i, I learned from him a lot you know about running and about life and uh yeah he's a big influence in my life um and um besides that i have my uh my uh, uh physical therapist who takes care of me and uh, you know make sure makes that I am in one piece and uh, and and it's all also kind of like some form of therapy in a way and uh, and uh, my psychologist she's a sports and, and clinical psychologist um, and I see her like two to three times a month and. I talk to her about running and I talk to her about life and she really helps me like prepare for what I need and kind of like, um, you know, learn about my life and about myself. And I think it's been a big part of my improvement and success. And, and, and besides, I think it's just really good for me, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, just in general in life. Yeah, so th those we are like the big have pieces. Amazing. We actually have a question specifically about that very last piece that you were just talking about. Um, <clears throat> what kind of a therapist do a lot of athletes work with? I think they mean the clinical psychologist that you mentioned that you see. Um, so uh, do a lot of athletes work with psychologists? Is that common? You know, I think... I I think I'm pretty open about it. Um, I was not used to be like that. Uh, I've seen, uh, you know, like sports 
clinical psychologist like since I, I was young, I guess like I mm -hmm. started in college really and uh, I'm working with this per particular one. She's like sports psychologist, so, um, but she's also clinical, so it kind of works well for me because we can, you know, it's like all encompassing. Mm -hmm. um, but to, to the question if all athletes, I think it's still kind of like a taboo in a way, not a lot of mm -hmm. people talk about about that. And as I, I guess I was, I started to say that I was a little embarrassed about it in the beginning, but now I'm, I'm very open to talk about it because I do think it makes a big difference. Maybe it's not for everyone, I mean, I'm sure, but, and it takes us kind of like, it takes a, it takes trust and practice to, to kind of get like what you need from from your from like this kind of uh, of work, and I, I I honestly think at this level you pro I would be surprised if there are people that don't so see like a sports psychologist because uh, the pressure is really high and you know um, there's a lot of things that go into it. You have to navigate a lot of things and. Um, I, I hope I hope they do because you know to kind of try to deal with this on on your own is difficult and so hey, you have your support system you know your friends or um, you know maybe somebody's married or whatever or have a boyfriend but um, I believe that you know like this is not necessarily there in in you know in like yes you can you know, of course like some can be a, like confident or something like that, but it's also important to have somebody that is objective and uh, at least that's my belief, you know, um, to have somebody that's objective and not to put all these burden on, on a specific person that's not necessarily his role in a way, you know. I love that answer and I my only wish is that it will be less taboo to talk about this kind of stuff because mental health in general I think is very taboo to talk about and then mental health for athletes is a, is kind of a newer topic that people have only started talking about in the last five to ten years. Um, so I really love the fact that you put so much importance to it and that I love the fact that you have someone that you feel that you can really trust your relationship with your support system is very important. So I'm very happy to hear that you have an amazing support system that helps you so much. Um, yeah, my I think next, I, oh, go, go ahead. Yeah, I was just gonna say that I think I'm fortunate, but it also, um, it's not taken for granted. Like it, you know, it took some, it takes some trial and error to get to this point when, where you trust the people you work with. You know? um, and not, you know, and not everybody is, is a good fit, but, you know, I'm at the point where I found like, you know, what's working for me right now, you know? So, um, so I guess mm -hmm. like, I guess like my, my, my piece is like, don't get discouraged. Cause you know, I just take some time sometimes to find who's the right person or people for you. Yeah. It's like dating, I suppose. It's, uh, yeah. you have yeah. to try it out find the one that works best for you. And then um, sometimes it might feel so difficult, but then you might eventually get to a point where you say, oh, I finally found that piece. And I finally found that piece and things start coming together. And that's when it gets really exciting. So yeah, I love for that sure. answer, yeah, way. that's a good analogy. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Uh, my next question is specifically about struggle. I want to talk about struggle because when I started doing these interviews, I would ask like, what was the most memorable, most like amazing part of your athletic career? And I thought it would be like, it was when I got the gold medal. It was when I won the race. It was when I did this. But what I learned from a lot of athletes is that it was moments of struggle that taught them the most about themselves as, as athletes. So then that's my question to you. Uh, what is the moment of struggle that you feel has really taught you the most about yourself throughout your athletic experience? Um, as I as I mentioned before, I had a lot of setbacks in the past like four or five years. So I don't think it's necessarily mm -hmm. one specific setback, but because it was kind of like a, an ongoing 
thing, you know, um, it started with like injuries that took like two years and uh, then, you know, you get to the, you get to the swing of things and then uh, COVID hits and then I got COVID. And uh, <laughs> so like, it was like a lot of things that, you know, a lot of setbacks and that didn't really let me live to uh, my potential in the past five years, I think. Um, but they all really, you know, I think all taught me, you know, every specific thing kind of teaches you, but I think like in general, um, you know, and I, and I think my race is like a very good example for it because I haven't raced a marathon in four years for those reasons, you know, um, and I think it shows me that like how much I want this you know like like it gave me motivation you know and he showed me and I showed you know I showed like myself like okay like, I I want this like how much do I you know how much do I want this and like what do I need to do to to get what I want you know and like achieve my goals so I think it shows you like your inner strength and that you can do it, you know, because I did show myself that I can do it, you know. Um, the other thing is also uh, being patient. I think being patient, like I, I have a hard time being patient. So, <laughs> um, so, but I think something in this, in this sport, you have to be patient. And that's something that my coach would always, always tell me that you know you have to be patient there is always you know running is like you know it doesn't go like this all the time it ebbs and flows and there is a season for everything and especially after i got covid i really had to be patient with myself with my training and and just like believing that you know i'll have another opportunity to to really like realize my uh, my training and you know like all my hard work because uh, I was I got COVID like this before I was gonna run a marathon back in December so it was like really a big uh, punch to the stomach basically um, yeah, yeah and, and also like you know I think it shows you also your flaws in a way I mean maybe flaws is a big word but I think uh, your weaknesses maybe um as a person or as an athlete you know um and we all have that of course i think for me it yeah. showed me like where my weaknesses are like um, and so i could you know i could point them out uh, you know and that's you know and i was talking to you about my therapist and that's like a big work that i do with her as well uh, just right. uh, how can i how can i grow and what what can i do to make my weaknesses uh you know better or you know work on that and um and all that and you know i for me like also try to grow like as a person and i think like i made i made big improvements in my mental like capacity as an athlete uh you know thanks i guess to all of these uh setbacks and and just kind of like working and dissecting like all these things um yeah it's it's not really pretty work all the time you know like to actually realize like oh like i don't really like this and i don't really like that i do this and i don't really like that i feel this way you know about specific things but um i think that is important um yeah <laughs> I love that answer. I hope I answered your you question. From, you did. You you answered it perfectly, and I love it especially because you answered it from the inside out. Uh, we're talking about uh, you had struggles in terms of injuries that required a lot of patience, and then you also had, I don't know if I would call them inner struggles, but you more like um, uh, working on yourself and yourself, like your character and yourself as a person. Um, and so I think that's actually a very well-rounded answer of, of all the different aspects of things that you're constantly working on. Um, amazing answer. I have to say, I just keep getting more and more thanks. inspired by you. And so I really love it. Oh, um, and something I would love to talk about with you <clears throat> is uh, specifically the importance of strong women. 
strong women, first of all, are totally badass. Um, I want there to be more of them in my life. Um, and I love the fact that I have you as a role model of one of them. So how has being a strong woman helped you in your everyday life? Just everyday life, uh, living you know, your life in Boulder, Colorado, uh, being a strong woman, how, how does that affect your life on a daily basis? Yeah, I mean, I think that's, you know, what you said is, is a good goal to like, you know, surround yourself like with strong women. I think that, you know, finding, you know, the right uh, kind of circle is, is sometimes difficult. Um, you know, you want people to kind of like push you, you know, and like help you help you make like next steps and all that. But um, I think... I think for me, like, you know, you know, besides being like physically strong, I guess you can call it this way. Um, I think it, <laughs> it helps. Uh, it, it, um, it transcends to like, you know, like to, to the non-physical aspects of things. And I think that uh, that shows in like, like maybe self-confidence and, you know, self-esteem and um, just, uh, being like assertive and and stuff like that, which I mean, honestly, um, you know, we can talk about it like in, in it's, I think it's a topic for a different conversation, but in the States sometimes it's a bit difficult, you know, especially being Israeli, you know? <laughs> so like, yeah. um, sometimes, sometimes it clashes, you know, and you have to navigate that. But I, I am never apologizing for like who I am, you know? Um, so yeah, I think I think it does help me lead, you know, a life in the US, which is difficult because I am doing this all on my own, basically. Um, I mean, with my support system, of course, like we talked about it, but you know, it, it, eventually it's like it's I'm on my own, you know, I have to take care of things on my own and all that. So and um and like, you know, it helps me know that I, I can do it. You know, I can do whatever I need to do like on my own. And, and I get, you know, it's like, I'm more like self-reliable, -re um, especially like, you know, like living in the US. Um, I think like it helps me in my relationships. Although I think that's kind of like a difficult topic because it, you know, it helps and doesn't help me at the same time. Uh, but it helps me just in in the sense, <laughs> in the sense that <laughs> I know what I want. You know, I know what I want out of my friendships and um, whatever romantic relationships, or you know. And if I believe that if people have a problem with it, then you know they're not a good fit, anyways. So um, you know, that's I think that's another topic for conversation. But you know. You know, eventually I, I, I am not apologetic for like, you know, like for, for who I am. And, you know, it all it all is kind of connected, um, just being strong. And as I said, I think it, it trans, trans, transcends to to the like the other aspects. And um, I think also, um, you know, like just uh, in like, for example, if I set myself like goals outside of running in terms of like, you know, a job or just things, um, I usually get it done. And um, yeah, I think like sports, you know, helps me in that aspect, yeah. Amazing, amazing. I love that answer. And I think that um, especially what you say about uh, being non-apologetic to, to who you are, your true authentic self, who you are truly, um, I think that's very, very important. Um, and our next topic really, as we're coming close to the end of our interview, uh, I want to talk about our community for a second, Women Who Lift Israel. We are about 1,200 women, um, and according to our statistics, at least uh, almost half of our uh, women in our community are totally new to all forms of strength training. These are women who are curious, they've just started, uh, they might not necessarily have a lot of experience yet. What advice do you have for these women who are just starting out? Yeah, so I think a couple of things, and honestly, I can 
I can talk uh, from experience because I actually got injured from strength training. Um, so uh, just like do it really gradually. Um, you have to t take a coach that A, you believe in and you trust and also knows what they're doing. <laughs> I think that's very important. And they, they got to know you and, you know, like, I mean, I know in the beginning it's hard to figure all these things out, but, um, but, but you know, I think like being safe is better, like in the beginning and things gradually and being patient with that. But uh, most importantly, it, it, it's um, really important to work with somebody that uh, is very knowledgeable and um, yeah, just that will gradually build you into what you want to do. Um, yeah, just really prevent injuries. Um, that's, I think that's a big part. And being patient because these things, they take time, you know? So yeah, and, and sometimes you won't see like results for like months and months and then all of a sudden it will, it will come. So yeah, and you never know when it's gonna come. That's the thing, so. <laughs> That's the most exciting part. You have to be persistent. That's the best part. I agree. And yeah. I think persistence, yeah, for sure. persistence and patience is the two biggest thing because strength training and really if you want to get better at anything just takes time um, and time requires patience. So yes, amazing answer. Um, so my, oh, my yeah. uh, second to last question for you is um what is really next for you for 2021 and beyond i mean we know that you're going to the tokyo olympics very soon uh other than that what can we expect from you yeah so um i i really think uh, you know having this breakthrough that i had like uh, a couple of weeks ago really like opened open doors well open doors for me in terms of of what i expect for myself and what i want from myself you know um because honestly if you were asking me like this question like three years ago i would like oh I, you know i'll be happy with running 230 in the marathon and you know i'll be good with that and that's it but now i ran 229 and i'm like well this is not the end of it so um so yeah i, I it made you makes you really want more so so i think after the olympics i would want to um get on the track and get some speed um get my speed up a little and run some track races because i haven't been on the track in a really long time and uh, besides really like you know i really like racing on the track i would like to get my prs down um especially in the 5k and the 10k and I would like to run some major marathons when, you know, that's, I mean, it's gonna start in the fall again, but definitely I would like to, you know, run more like marathons that I don't necessarily have to hit a specific time and, you know, just kind of like work, you know, towards like more in that area in the marathon. Um, there's world championship next year in 2020. 22 which i definitely want to take part of and i definitely want to do another uh, olympic cycle you know so um yeah it's for now i think in terms of, of running amazing so so we will hopefully expect for you in 2024 to see you at the olympics again hopefully. yeah i hope you know <laughs> We'll amazing amazing so we have a few questions that we got here from our community i would love to ask you uh let's see here uh our first question is do you follow a specific nutrition plan nutrition is a big topic in our community even though we're strength training we talk about nutrition a lot they go very much together uh so nutrition yeah i don't have anything like super specific uh, I do work with a nutritionist just to make sure that I get all the nutrients that I need and enough. Um, 
especially in, in really high load training. Uh, but it's not that she's telling me eat this much or that much, you know, just making sure that what I eat is enough um, and I get vitamins and minerals. Uh, that I think it, it gets a little more specific, like maybe the week of a marathon, that's when, uh, like, for example, before this marathon, we I followed, you know, like a more specific diet just to like make sure my stomach is not going to act up in the middle of the marathon, and which really worked, actually. Um, so that's Amazing. probably the most specific that I, yeah, that I, I got. Uh, in terms of my nutrition, but I think in in general I, I tend to eat healthy and I I like eating healthy, so it's not really difficult for me. But um, I ate, I ate fries yesterday and drank a beer, so <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was like okay, whatever, you know. Um, yeah, Amazing. It's, you know, I, I I don't think like really uh, staying away from specific specific things is really helpful but you know everything in moderation of course um yeah yes of course uh let's see next question uh what is your goal in terms of time at the olympics so for anyone who hasn't realized yet you are running the marathon um what is your do you have a goal in terms of time a specific goal already um not not really i don't really have a specific goal um it's a bit tough to like talk about goals for the Olympics just because I'm also so fresh of, of my recent accomplishments. Um, so to talk about time is gonna is um, is difficult. I'll, you know, I think if I maintain, you know, like the ballpark of what I ran, then I'll be happy and and I definitely wanna get a good place. Um, I don't I don't I don't have a specific place that I'm like, okay, this is going to be the place that I'm going to be happy with, but just, you know, just maintain and, and, um, run the best that I, you know, I can, I can run, um, at that point in time, you know, um, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And I mean, it's, it's also like you said earlier in the interview, the fact that you're even there or going to be there on that starting line with all those other runners that all qualified for the Olympics, the fact that you're even there is a huge, huge win. So um, I actually, uh, even though you don't have an answer for the question really, I like your answer, the fact that you don't have one. Um, I think that's smart. And I think uh, we're all just very proud that you're even going. Um, so yeah, thanks. Uh, very fair. Yes, of course. Uh, let's see. We have a question here. Uh, I know you were in the army in Israel. What did you do in the army, and did it happen to be anything sports related? Uh, so um, I was a sport aide <laughs> uh, in in the in in the army. You get you have like a specific. I don't know if you're familiar for athletes. And you get, mm -hmm. uh, uh, so I was, I was in this, in this program where you basically able to keep training. You have, you know, you are allowed to basically, I guess, work less every day and you get specific uh, days to go for training camps and races and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it just makes the life easier for athletes if you get this kind of uh if you get into this into this program, it, it's in in English is a bit difficult to explain that, but um, uh, yeah. So I was a soldier teacher actually, and uh, for you know uh, whoever doesn't know, I was uh, basically I was on uniform, but I worked in a, in schools. So I worked in schools in Kfar Saba in my hometown. So my commute was pretty easy. And uh, so I, I like bike to school every day. <laughs> and um, I worked uh, in elementary school my first year and in high school my second year. And it was working with um, mostly like low socioeconomic um, schools and, and kids and helping them um, socially and helping them like with homework. And um, in, in the high school, I actually, I also helped with PE um 
So that was fun because I could, you know, just kind of use my skills a little more. And I also helped the kids in high school getting ready for the army because, you know, it, uh, I think, what is it, 10th grade when you start getting um, questionnaires for the army. It's it's kind of like I think it's an it's a nice presence of uh, of a soldier to be in these kind of situations, and they can ask you questions, and you can tell them about your experience, um, and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, that's what I did in the army. Amazing. And we have one very final question here. Um, I think it's kind of a joke. Do you take any energy drinks or is coffee enough since you said that you are a, quite a coffee lover? Um, any energy drinks I'm, in your I'm drinking your coffee life? right now. <laughs> so I guess uh, that's uh, no. coffee only. Uh, I just drink Nuno. Um, you know, it's a isotonic. It's like electrolytes. Uh, Amazing. But in terms of of caffeine, no, no, only coffee. I drink maybe two, two to three a day, maybe something like that. Um, yeah, I mean, hydration is very important. So, so coffee and 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 water and noon and and that, that's pretty much it. Amazing. Well, those are all of our community questions for this evening, and I would love to end our amazing interview on a positive note. So. Ma'ol, uh, a few last words from the heart. What is your motto in life and why? Uh, yeah, I, I, I thought about it a lot, but, but I think pr what it always comes down to is uh, just to believe in yourself. So I think believing is a big part of my life. And because eventually I think, you know, if even if if you have so many people in your corner, you are your best uh, advocate, and um, you know, eventually you lead your life. And if you're not not you, but you know, I, I feel that if I'm not gonna get, you know, if I'm not gonna advocate for myself, then who will? You know, so um, yeah. So just yeah, and and besides that, just believing, you know, in yourself. That's probably the most important thing. Amazing. I love that. And I think that is a really great motto to live by. Uh, so everyone, I hope you have enjoyed this amazing interview that we've had with Ma'ol Tiuli. If you go into our text, if you're on Facebook, it's above. If you're on YouTube, it's below. Go ahead and follow Ma'ol. Follow her journey. Cheer her on all the way to Tokyo. And Ma'ol, thank you so much for your time tonight. We appreciate you being with us and we really appreciate your answers and learning about your story. It's been a really great hour. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was fun. I appreciate you having Amazing. me. Amazing. Yeah, thank you. It's been wonderful. All right, everyone, have a great evening. Thank you so much.